Millerton Lake was formed in 1944 by Friant Dam, which was one of the few large construction projects that continued after the start of World War II. But long before Millerton Lake was formed, Fort Miller and the town of Millerton were established along the south bank of the San Joaquin River. Today, we stand by the bank of the San Joaquin River, not far from Friant Dam and Millerton Lake. On the ground, some grinding rocks or pounding rocks, which were used by Native Americans to pound up acorns, can be seen. Unfortunately, it was a conflict between settlers and Native Americans that gave rise to Fort Miller. On December 17, 1850, James D. Savage's trading post on the Fresno River was attacked by Indians starting a conflict that came to be known as the Mariposa Indian War. By April of 1851, the war was coming to an end. A peace parley was held at Camp Barbour, which was established on April 14th. On April 29th, a treaty of peace and friendship was drawn up by three federal Indian commissioners, one of which was George W. Barbour, who was Camp Barbour's namesake. The treaty was approved by 16 tribal representatives who agreed to stop fighting, give up their lands, and relocate to the Fresno River Reservation. Nowhere in the treaty was it mentioned that a military post would be founded near Camp Barbour to deal with any issues stemming from the Indian Reservation. By the summer of 1851, the fort and reservation were functioning. Soldiers under the command of Lieutenant Treadwell Moore established Fort Miller on May 26, 1851. The fort was named after Major Albert S. Miller, who was the commander of the army stationed at Benicia in Solano County. An Indian village stood on the proposed site of the fort, but Lieutenant Moore and his men burned it to the ground. Local Dumna Yokuts and their chief, Tom Kitt, were ordered to help build Fort Miller, which sat on their ancestral lands. The Indians received no payment and were lashed with whips for even the smallest infractions. Some of the whippings resulted in death. Fort Miller's location was both practical and problematic. Sitting in a small valley, the fort would have gotten extremely hot in the summers. According to William F. Edgar, who was the fort's first physician, the direct and reflected rays of the sun made it the hottest midday station on the coast. Despite the heat, a small commercial city sprang up around Fort Miller. Major Lane was the first to open a store. Bigfoot Miller started a saloon, and Hugh Carlin started a trading post that was popular with both whites and Native Americans, since he didn't use false weights to give the Native Americans less money for the gold they brought in. There are no available first-hand reports of Fort Miller from soldiers or lesser officers, so it is difficult to get a complete picture of Fort life. However, in his 1878 reminiscence of Fresno County, William Famelinville wrote, at the fort, everything went on swimmingly. The men were a lot of good boys, and the officers were gentlemen. He was not accounting for the mistreatment of the Native Americans, but otherwise this would have been true. Soldiers of the fort could entertain themselves by hunting, visiting the nearby Sebastio Pool of Brothel, or mining for gold. Fort Miller was temporarily shut down on September 10, 1856, and wasn't fully reopened until 1863. During this time, local families would have lived in the deserted buildings. Alicia Cotton Winchell's family lived there in 1859 in the off-base hospital, which served as the first schoolhouse for the Milliton School District created on February 6, 1860. By the time of the Civil War, the Native American threat had subsided in the Fort Miller area, but Confederate sympathizers were a new problem and prompted the army to reoccupy the fort. Despite the reports of Confederate activity, the threat was extremely low and Fort Miller had very few serious duties. Discipline was very lax and drinking became common. It is reported that Colonel Olney even performed an inspection missing his pants due to a massive hangover. Soon, infantry companies began to leave, the last of which was on October 1st, 1864. Fort Miller was officially abandoned on December 1st, 1864. Clark Hoxie was appointed the caretaker of the fort after the abandonment, and once again, regular families, including Andrew Firebows, reoccupied 
the abandoned buildings. Olney returned in 1866 and auctioned off many of Fort Miller's buildings. The property itself became Judge Charles A. Hart's Fort Miller Ranch. William H. McKenzie later bought the ranch, and his children tried to save it when Friant Dam was proposed in the 1930s. The government eventually obtained the title to the land, and Millerton Lake now covers Fort Miller's site. The only remaining building, the Old Fort Blockhouse, was dismantled and moved to Fresno's Roding Park, where it opened as a museum on November 14, 1954. The blockhouse remained on Roding Park until the late 1990s, when it was moved again to the Table Mountain Rancheria Cultural Center. Just down the river from Fort Miller, the town of Millerton would have also been thriving during this time period. This is the only remaining building from the town, the Millerton Courthouse. Rootville, or Millerton, was established in July of 1851. The exact date of the name change to honor Fort Miller is unknown. The name Rootville offers evidence that Sonoran miners from Mexico stopped to pan for gold there. Mexican used bateas, which were bowls made from tree roots, to pan for gold, and it is likely that white settlers... By 1852, other families arrived and Fort Miller's storekeepers established new businesses. Hugh Carlin was the first to occupy a brick building which the Millerton Courthouse was built next to in 1866. These two buildings were the only structures left to mark where the town was after its demise. An influx of citizens began in 1852 through 1853. There was enough activity to warrant a Millerton post office on October 11, 1853. The post office merged with Fort Miller's post office in December 23, 1874. In time, a Wells Fargo agency was even opened in Millerton. The first hotels were built in 1854, and with the hotels came Millerton's first black residents. Jane and Tom Derman were likely the first black people to settle in Fresno County. Jane Derman went on to open her own business, which was remarkable for the time. Jane was so well liked that when she died in 1865, her mostly white friends gave her a proper funeral and burial. Religious services came to the growing town as well. David Latimer was a traveling Methodist who was thought to be the first minister of Millerton. The mid-1850s marked Millerton's golden era. With the established nearby mills, lumber was readily available and saloons and gambling dens were flourishing. Ira McCracy's well-known Oak Hotel would have been a sight to behold. In 1856, Fresno County formed. The Fresno County Board of Supervisors met at Millerton on July 23, 1856, and the county was declared. As the county's largest settlement, Millerton was chosen as the first county seat. The Millerton Courthouse was built in 1866 through 1867, 10 years after Fresno County was formed. The late 1850s and early 1860s was a time of modest expansion for Millerton. A few people associated with the town began to build homes outside of the unofficial town limits. Another suburb of Millerton developed after 1856 when Chinese people and their businesses were ejected from the town. Tong Sing and Hop Wo were known Chinese storekeepers that were affected. After the formation of Fresno County, the Chinese were banished to some level land between Fort Miller and Millerton because of the white settlers had decided that the Chinese were too different to stay in the town. In the winter of 1861 through 1862, floods wiped out a large portion of Millerton. However, Millerton residents liked their easy access to the water and rebuilt again near the bank of the San Joaquin River instead of moving to higher ground. In the spring of 1864, Laura A. Winchell opened a new school after the area had been without one for four years. The Fresno Times was Fresno County's first newspaper and the brainchild of Ira McRae. It began publication on 8 January 28, 1865, and ended on April 29th of the same year. The courthouse completion in 1867 marked the apex of Millerton's development. Six months later, on December 24, 1867, a massive flood destroyed much of the town, broke its spirits, and sent Millerton into a decline from which it never recovered. Two and a half years after the flood, on July 3, 1870, Blacksmith D.B. McCarthy set off a firework and caught a portion of the town on fire. 
When the county seat was moved to Fresno on March 23, 1874, there was no longer reason for anyone to live in Millerton, as much of the mining was gone at this point as well. Everyone began moving out and going to Fresno, which was established in 1872. Millerton all but disappeared. The original site of the town now lies at the bottom of Millerton Lake. However, in 1941, the two-story brick courthouse was dismantled and preserved thanks to the native sons and native daughters of the Golden West. The courthouse was reconstructed and completed in 1970, and it now stands on Mariner Point, overlooking Millerton Lake and Fryett Dam, two miles from its original site. Inside there is a museum dedicated to the local history of the Millerton area. 